Hey guys, welcome to the pod. The pea pod. I'm Ladle. I'm Peas. And we have a full ladle of peas just for you. So let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. So glad that you could join us uh, again. And just in case um, this is you or you're unaware of this, <laughs> this is the Ladle of Peas podcast. Uh, my name is Peas. And this is my stupendous counterpart, Ladle. I'm Ladle. Um, or Brennan and Justine, if you prefer to be boring. Um, now, <laughs> the inter- here's <laughs> this is the interesting part. So today is October 26th that we're recording this. When and we're so filming. It's slash recording. it's Back to the Future Day. <coughs> it's all well, okay. It's my brother Keenan's birthday, so happy birthday, Keenan. That's first and foremost. He's Kenan's 10 years turning old. 10, double digits. Double it's digits. excellent. Happy birthday, Keenan. Super excellent. Um, but it's also Back to the Future Day, which is my favorite movie, my favorite series of movies. So I have all my paraphernalia and stuff here. Um, this is over behind my right shoulders, this cool little um, v- VHS of the movie that my dad got me for Christmas. But they took the tape out and they put LEDs in it. So it makes fun colors. And then the movie is back there. And this is all my cool. Hold He's on. got a lot of stuff. If you're listening and not watching. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, you might want to go to the YouTube and see the circus that he has going on right now because it's. It's really cool. It's I a lot. Yeah. <laughs> the, the peas are all over here. And this is the... Oh, you can't really see that. It's a deck of cards, uh, Back to Future cards. Anyway. Um, it's I got ho- a lot. I hope that you have all been enjoying this podcast just as much as we have putting it together because it's just... It's been a ton of fun. Um, mm-hmm. But if you are new uh, in this podcast, we just like to aim to talk about God's word, some cool musical things. We rant about some random things and then maybe even learn something along the way. Oh, Yeah. Usually I teach something to him and he teaches something to me. It's a full experience. So hopefully we're anyway, teaching you something at the same time. Please time for open Welcome your scriptures. to the Word. Welcome to the Word. Open your scriptures open to your Philippians scriptures. chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. That is where we will be today on now, the topic of Thanksgiving. Right, because hopefully when this comes out, it'll be around the time of Thanksgiving. So we're we trying to be think. a little bit more... Um, festive for when you guys are <laughs> listening to this. So hopefully we're going to do some some good Thanksgiving things. All right. So Philippians chapter four, verse four, I'm going to read it through. Uh, we're going to do verse four or chapter four, verse four through seven. So if you have your scriptures out, you can read now. <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord always. I ge- again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Yes. I got it this time. Well done. Okay, so this is a, so Thanksgiving coming up here. Um, most people think of Thanksgiving, they don't really think about like Bible passages, Bible things. I feel like it's, it's very much people think it's a, like a, what's the word, secular holiday. But mm-hmm. Thanksgiving is a huge part of the Bible. It's part of um, God's message to us um, to, to have Thanksgiving towards, towards him when we pray. So we're, we're going to kind of get into that a little bit. Um, and this verse is a big one, I think, of when you think of Thanksgiving because it has the word in it. Um, but so rejoice, right? The, f- the opening of this says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. So rejoicing is something that this whole book, Philippians, is about basically mm-hmm. about suffering and rejoicing and suffering. Because Paul is, when he's doing this, is being hung from his ankles, basically, from the ceiling with his back all lacerated from being beaten and he's been persecuted. He's oh. in jail. And Ouch. he's... And he's re- and he's writing this <laughs> whole book about joy in persecution and mm-hmm. in in pain. And so this this opening part is just again just him just really hammering in this point that no matter where you are, have joy, because mm-hmm. the Lord is with you. The Lord is near you. Um, the Lord is at hand. That's what it says here in the, mm-hmm. in the text. Um, but y- the basic message is no matter what your circumstances is, this is where your joy should be found. So. Um, don't don't base your happiness because that's even like the word of happiness is is based on the happenings of what's happening in your life right now. I also Joy. see this verse paired oftentimes with James chapter one. Oh yeah, um, count it all to joy, my brothers. Yeah. even in your sufferings. Exactly. Um, because it's the same idea of uh, in times of trials and hurt and bad icky feelings, uh, 
giving it to the Lord. It says, do not be anxious about anything. It's less of a command and more of an encouragement that Paul is giving to the people in Philippi. And so he's not like, quit being anxious. Whoa, Paul, you solved all of my problems. <laughs> my anxiety? Gone. <laughs> it exactly. doesn't exist. Precisely. Um, he's trying to get us to form good habits of the heart is what I read in one commentary. And I thought that was an excellent way to put it. I will let you continue. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that hits it right on the head. Just It's not a circumstantial thing. Joy comes from the Lord. It mm-hmm. doesn't come from what you're doing in the moment. Um, but There's also a difference of joy and happiness. And right, yeah. You know, that's another conversation for maybe another time. Right, but right. Anyway, so... And so, yeah, the joy comes from the Lord, comes from God, and that's what these first few sentences are about. Um, But also, like, don't be anxious about what's next, you know, about, don't be anxious about your future because the Lord is at hand. You know, it's always rejoicing, no anxiety. That's Mm -hmm. what this whole next section is about. Um, But, so then, uh, so we read these, we were in the library, we read these commentaries, right? Yeah, we had like six of them. We had a lot of them while we were doing (laughs) this, and that was today. So, um, I read this commentary by Gordon D. Gordon D. Fee, and it's in his commentary, Paul's letter to the Philippians, and this is what he said. And this is about this topic of thanksgiving that comes in the next verse. It says, thanksgiving is an explicit acknowledgement of creaturelessness and dependence, a recognition that everything comes as a gift. That that verbalization before God of his goodness and generosity. Thanksgiving does not mean to say thank you in advance for gifts to be received. Rather, it is an absolutely basic posture of the believer and the proper context for petitioning God. So, you know, this part in the text says, uh, where is it? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with mm-hmm. thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. So part of praying to God and asking and petitioning to the Lord is is thanksgiving. That's that's part of the whole thing. Like even having this, having the posture of thanksgiving is, is really the root of when you're coming to God, because if you're not thankful, then it just sound it just kind of takes the power away from your prayer almost. I don't mean to say that your prayer doesn't mean anything when you don't have it. It just it just sounds more like complaining to God when you don't mm-hmm. have that that element of thanksgiving. It just seems like I'm having all these horrible things happen. Please help me, which is a, a prayer that you can have. Like yeah. lament is a form of worship for sure. But I mean, we see it in the Psalms a lot. Exactly. But usually the Psalm, you know, starts off with "Oh, my life is horrible. All these bad things are happening." But God, yes, and it comes back cetera. around. You've, you've got to have that, like, even though I'm hurting and I'm in pain, thank you, because you're using this pain for something good. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, even, it doesn't even feel like that. Like, I've been through several things p- this past year, freshman year, this year, sophomore year. It's, it's relentless the amount of times where I'm like, why is this happening? There's no way this can be for good. This is way too much pain. But it is. And, and, and even in freshman year, I was be able to see glimpses of how this is a good thing. This is pushing me towards God because that's his ultimate goal. Um, but... Thanksgiving is, is a very pivotal part of petitioning God and coming before him in all sorts of prayer. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to highlight that there's a portion uh, that I, I mean, I kind of talked about it a minute ago, but the do not be anxious as a command, and, or not as a command, but as an encouragement, and how Paul kind of lays out exactly what we're supposed to do in case of anxiety and worry. And he says, worried? Pray. <laughs> that didn't work. Try doing some sort of service, supplication, things like that. And that can include self-service as well. And by that, I mean like self-care. Self-care is oftentimes, I think, thought of in our day and age as like a bad thing almost, is like I'm glorifying myself. But if I'm not taking care of myself, how am I able to serve those around me? And how is that glorifying to God if I'm not taking care of the vessel that he gave me? And so I've been talking about that a lot in our life group um, this semester. That's been my whole theme, actually, is self-care and why it's glorifying to God. But (laughs) um, so if self-care or care for others, let's say you're really good at doing the self-care, but you're not so good at serving others, go serve somebody. Do something really nice for them. It doesn't have to be like some big grand gesture. It can be something really simple and really just... Like, hey, I I saw that you did this today, and I thought that was really awesome. And if that doesn't work, you're still worried. You're still anxious. You're still stressed. 
Give thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Number three, thanksgiving. Go to the Lord and say, you know what, God? I'm still worried. I'm still stressed, but thank you for how I'm feeling, even though that doesn't make sense. And it seems really backwards. God, um, I've heard it put this way, has a upside down kingdom um, in a sense that from the world's point of view, it looks pretty backwards and upside down. Um, but in reality, his kingdom is right side up on top and the world is upside down and falling apart and breaking. Um, and so I think about that <laughs> and I think about how we can say, you know what, it might look really upside down right now and really strange, but God, I know you're still on top and God, I still know you're the highest. And, um, <laughs> if that doesn't work. The last thing that Paul says to do is lay it down and let it go. And he says, lay it down and let it go. You're holding on too tight. And if you can't do that, it's going to be a real rough ride for you. <laughs> and I'm not saying that if you have anxiety and you've been diagnosed with that or things like that, um, that you shouldn't like go to a counselor or take mm -hmm. medication yeah. or things like that. If you bumped your knee and it hurts, take ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have anxiety, take the medication if it helps. Exactly. Um, but also know that there's a part of that that you have to lay down at Jesus' feet and say, okay, here it is. This is all of the blah and all of the crap and take it because the more I hold on, the worse it feels. Mm -hmm. And thank you for taking that from me because mm -hmm. I can't handle it. <laughs> yeah. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. <laughs> exactly. That's a good, so. that's a good point. I didn't think about that, you know, being able to, to not compartmentalize it, mm -hmm. but just trust in the Lord's provision through those things. You know, like I would say like, you know, people have a headache or you know they're super sick and they're like god I just heal me please then they take medication they take ibuprofen whatever it is and then they feel better and then the instant thought in their head is not thank you god for healing me is the ibuprofen worked the medicine worked it mm -hmm. did its job and so recognizing the fact that those exactly. two things have to go together and god can use those things mm -hmm. to answer your prayer i've you heard know? some people say um this has been said to somebody very close to me that has anxiety, that um, she was not praying hard enough. And that that's is why, why yeah. Hmm. And that um, if her anxiety didn't go away immediately, then she was not a, not doing it right. And that the medication was not, it was from the devil and not to be oh, used man. and things like that. And it was very misleading for her and very difficult because she, <laughs> she was just trying to, get the healing and the the community and the love that she needed and this person was just pounding her in the ground Man. and sometimes i think about that and it makes me a little sad and a little upset and very mad <laughs> yeah <laughs> because that's not the right why are you keeping somebody from getting the help that god is placing right in front of them mm -hmm. god says here it is take it and the world will still say no, you can't have that because that's from the devil. And God's like, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. It's in my hand, mm -hmm. not yours, mm -hmm. mine. <laughs> and over and over again. Sorry that that kind of got off track a little bit, but no, 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 that's, 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 it, it applies <laughs> to the situation is part of the. And if you uh, do all of those things, you lay it down. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Boom. Right. If then statement. Mm -hmm. If you do these things, then this will happen. If you do not do these things, the peace and which surpasses all understanding is not going to happen. <laughs> You're going to be really feeling a little unsteady, very mm -hmm. unsteady. Exactly. Because your feet aren't planted. Mm hmm Right on. In the peace of God. In the peace of God. 
Anyway. That's what I got to say about that. That was awesome. Thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry. I appreciate that. That was, that was great. Sometimes um, I talk too much. <laughs> no, you do not. I want you to talk because I talk too much. It's got to even out at some point. Um, so two things to put mm-hmm. into that is um, in verse 4, 5 actually, um, the ESV says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Um, the I like the word, another way that can be translated is the word uh, gentleness. Mm. So let your gentleness be known to everyone. That, yeah. it, compare, I so that. if you think about that, that doesn't say let your gentleness be known to your family or your friends and the people close to you. It's let your gentleness or your reasonableness be known to everyone. Mm-hmm. So every single person that sees you on the street and around the world, everybody in your context, your sphere of influence, yeah. that they should be able to see, oh, okay, you have that gentleness about you. I wonder where that comes from. You know, Jesus, seeking, right? Seeking what's best for everyone, not right. just yourself. You have, you have more Thanksgiving for things mm-hmm. in your life than other people. Thanksgiving plug. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing is that this whole... Thanksgiving thing is not just sprung on us in chapter four. Chapter one, verses three through five says, I thank my God in I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy. For you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. That is Paul modeling what those prayers should look like. So those prayers of, of thank, th- thankfulness and thanksgiving, that is him modeling it for us, which is really great <coughs> to have an example after him giving the instruction or before. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. And then I have another quote here from another, um, another commentary that says, Thanksgiving means God means giving God the glory in everything, making room for him, casting our care on him, letting it be his care. Uh, that's Mm -hmm. from Walter Hansen. Uh, so that's a pretty good summarize, summarization of what it means to have thankfulness and and be like kind of what you're saying, giving him, Mm -hmm. relying on those things that God gives you, but relying on him ultimately for the stuff. The stuff, <laughs> the life stuff. <laughs> um, when we don't have Thanksgiving prayer, that's why I, I already talked about that. Prayer can seem kind of empty. Um, and then, like you were saying, the last verse, verse 7, comes with a promise. It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds mm-hmm. in Christ Jesus. And the quote I found from an, even another commentary. Look at that. I'm a Bible scholar. Um, it's like you go to a Bible college. Yeah. <laughs> I did not get the the person who wrote it, unfortunately. So, dude who wrote it, you'll understand it. <laughs> you'll know who you are. Um, it says, God's peace is not the result of the power of our prayers or the effectiveness of our prayers. Prayer is not an auto-suggestion, a form of self-hypnosis that produces God's peace. Mm. Prayer is our openness about our needs before him, before oh. God. Our emptiness in his presence, Mm -hmm. our absolute dependence upon him with an attitude of constant thanksgiving and complete trust. When we pray with that attitude, the focus is not at all upon what we are doing or will do, but on that God, uh, but on what God will do. God will do something supernatural beyond our best abilities and thoughts. The peace of God will guard us. Peace is always the gift of God rather than humanly devised or achieved. So, this Thanksgiving, give thanks in everything. Give thanks. In everything, no matter what. If you're doing Thanksgiving with your family, be that person to suggest doing one thing you're thankful for around the table. As much as uh, some people think that's annoying, I think it's really such a blessing. (laughs) I think it is, too. I think it's an incredible way to interact with your family, especially... If your family's not Christians, it's a great way for them to see, Mm -hmm. like, I'm thankful for, you know, scripture or things like that. Opening that door, give them the opportunity Mm -hmm. to ask the questions this Thanksgiving. Be thankful for your family, for your friends, and for God. Bring something up that hurts. Bring something up that you don't feel like you're thankful for, but you want to thank God for it anyway, you know? Mm. Don't make it, like, awkward and be like, so I'm depressed and I'm thankful for that. Like, <laughs> put some finesse in it and yeah, and make it a joyful thing. But, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. woo Happy Thanksgiving. From Paul. From Paul to the Philippians. Do you have anything further? I do not. I have nothing further. I have closed my Bible. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Um... Anyway, All right, on so. to a side note. 
Um, <laughs> we're moving on to side note. So side note is our portion of the podcast where we talk a little bit about music. So Peas here will have a song of his own and then I will have a song of the week. Um, and then we will talk about a musical topic of our own. Clapping. Clapping. Within respects to <laughs> the church. We'll get to it. Anyway. <laughs> so what we have for music wise this week, mm-hmm. at least my song of the week, yes. is Hope by NF. Um I have been listening to this song for a while. All right, no, back up. So brief history of my history of NF. Um, it was, I don't know when it was, uh, it had to have been, uh, seventh grade? No, sixth grade. No, it was seventh grade. I discovered NF because I was trying to do this rap battle with my buddy Justin and he was good at writing yeah. raps. I was good at finding them. So I was like, I'm going to go find this rap. And my other friend Luke had, had showed me the rap and I was like, all right, I'm going to write it down and I'm going to rap it to him. And it's going to be great. And that song <laughs> was real by NF. That was one of his first songs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I know, can't imagine I you totally doing a rap battle. I totally plagiarized <laughs> it. I totally plagiarized it. Um, and so I sang it. It's I rapped real. it. He was like, "That was really good." I'm like, "Yeah, it's whatever." I definitely, <laughs> definitely wrote it. I could go to jail for it, but it's like, "Whoa, yeah, you should record that." <laughs> I should record that. So I sang that. It's a, it's, and so I. That's when I kind of get introduced to it. I got into it a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, now Nate's music. Nate is his name. NF stands for Nate. F- I can't pronounce his name. Something Nate F, um, NF, <laughs> and so his his he's got a couple. That. He's got his first m- album was Moments, but that's not really on Spotify. It's an old album. It's very, um, just people don't really know much about it because it's his first one. You know, it's like his yeah. EP. And so, but the first m- album he put out with a label was Mansion, and then Therapy Session, Perception, The Search, Clouds, and then Hope is his most recent album. Correct. Now, if you go, I'm going to try to be brief with this because I have a lot to say about the song. But <laughs> basically, he had a really hard childhood, as most people do. And um, his mom left. His dad was abusive. It was really bad, traumatic for him. And so he has these like demons, not demons like actual demons, but just these mm-hmm. these lies, these fears inside of him. And it comes out in his music. It's very angsty. Yeah. It's very like it, it's beautiful a lot of the times, like the way it he is. can portray his feelings, even like in therapy session. um, why would you leave us is about his mom dying and, and he, he, he breaks down crying on the record like towards the end he's just sobbing into the microphone and that's the end of the song because it's about him or his mom dying and so it's it's sad it's very emotional so that's kind of where mansion therapy session perception comes mm-hmm. from and you start to feel like you see his journey of working through this trauma and working through this hurt and it comes out in some pretty dark tones um like i was telling you earlier like um in perception he's got this like clown makeup almost it's black and it's in a smile but he's not smiling and he's got all this dark style right and so that was kind of when i was like oh man he's kind of going like in a not good fashion he's kind of like he's going into this like this dark tone and i don't like it and so i kind of fell off when clouds came out yeah i i I kind of listened to Search a little bit, but I started not because I was like really up with it. I could rap all the raps. It was like one of my favorite forms of music. Um, but now, Hope, Hope came out just about a year ago now, and really, it's, oh yeah, it's that old. Oh, that's it's that old. It's like huh. the music video for Hope is eight months old, and that oh. didn't come out. So yeah, it's oh just about a year. Um, and so I'm just gonna be looking at Hope, the title track, and this will be um. I'm going to break it up into like two parts, the music and the video, because they go together mm-hmm. really well. Ever since like perception and kind of therapy session, he's had these music videos that get more intense and m- more well quality as it progresses. And, and it shows how he's been growing in this. Right. Um, and so hope is this like culmination where um, the lyrics are incredible here. Let me pull them up here. Uh, I only just listened to the song today. Yeah, it I showed is, it to her during lunch. It is very good. It's I, really good. I'm not a, I'm not big on listening to rap anymore. I used to, but I only listen to like one of NF songs really ever. <laughs> so hearing this, it was a different side. Mm-hmm. It's I've a heard. totally different side when you listen. You know, when you listen to the, mm-hmm. the hope aspect of it, because this these lyrics are. Um, it says thirty years you've been dragging your feet, telling me that I'm the reason we are stagnant. Thirty years you've been, cl- you've been claiming you're honest and p- promising progress well where is it at i don't know i don't want you to feel like a failure 
I know this hurts, but I gave you your chance to deliver, and now it's my turn. Don't get me wrong, Nate. You've had a great run, but it's time to get the people something different. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce my... And then there's this crazy thing where you hear my album over and over and over again, his voice, but then there's like this demonic overtone in some of the voices. And so this is where the, the theme of the song and really the music video comes in for me. It's this idea of him. He's in all white. Now, in all the other videos, he's in all black. This is the time where he's in all white. He's got no makeup, anything. And the lyrics he's saying, he's like, I've had a hard life. I've had a rough life. Mm -hmm. But now, there's something else going on in me right now. I feel this hope. That's kind of where he's getting at. I'm feeling hope. I'm progressing out of this. Right. And so the music video is him on this raft alone. And then he gets on this island. And all these past selves of him in dark clothing are pointing him to the center of the island. The center of the island is Mansion, which is where one of his darkest moments is. He falls into Mansion. He sees all these old versions of himself. And the lyrics are just like, I had a mental breakdown. And some people think that's a bad thing. But I think it's a good thing because it pushed me to grow. And it pushed mm. me to get... Um, to get better, to heal. And he's a Christian guy. NF is a, I didn't mention that. He's a Christian guy. He has Christian lyrics. He doesn't profess to be like a Christian rapper because he feels like that has a bad stigma and he's not necessarily rapping on like biblical topics. But right. anyway, the song itself is amazing. The lyrics are awesome. It gives me hope for what's coming next, even though this just came out. I'm ready for, you know, his next album. And what? where is he going to go with this hope? Is he going to turn it into more of a biblical sense? Like he's going to bring Jesus into this? I don't know. Um, but it's just the lyrics, the music, it's very, it just gives me chills every time I hear it because yeah. it's so like, it's got very minory tones. That's all his music is like that. Um, it's very orchestral. It's got the, like the, mm -hmm. the strings going -lo 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 over and over again. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. So I love it. <laughs> and I could talk about it for, <laughs> for years. For um, a long time. Yeah. Well, is that all you have? That's pretty much all I had time for. I don't want to, I don't want to waste all our time. You should okay. Go. So my song of the week this week is very long and is a 15 minute long song, in fact. Dang. Um, but this week I've been listening to a lot of clarinet concertos and different classical music. But I had remembered this one piece in particular that has the most beautiful clarinet solo. It's a song that's a mesh of jazz and classical and it like integrates it into this beautiful masterpiece. And it's called Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin. And if you have not heard it, I would be very surprised because it's a very famous uh, clarinet solo piece. Um, and the clarinet solo is only for like the first six-ish minutes. And then it's all like piano and band stuff. So it's an excellent piece. It has so many different, um, like some, some pieces are sectioned in the like A B A B like format, but it has so many parts to it. You'd be using the whole alphabet, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, good for you know people of all varieties because it it's not the same tune the whole time, but it comes back to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, the jazz clarinet, I would literally cry if I could play like that. I wish that I could. I think you can. I've been trying to learn how to play that. Uh, it's like, um, what do you call it? <sighs> What's the word I'm looking for? It's like a more... Like a bend? Kind of. It's like what the French horns do a lot. A run? A, a rip? Uh, uh, a rip. Yeah, I don't and know. They, I don't know, but it's like slow and it like... It's so hard to do on clarinet. Let me tell you something. Clarinet's not made to s sound like it's got a slide attached to it. <laughs> do you have to move the keys really slow it's, around to it's get that like, like you like m slowly in? move your fingers off the keys so it's like half okay open and then you you're also adjusting your embouchure at the same time right. to bend the tone. Okay, got and it. And so it's just it's such a technically hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so in the recording on Spotify, which hopefully you'll listen to, it is excellently executed, and I love it very much. And that's all I have to say about Rhapsody in Blue. Go listen to it. Okay. Um, so we could talk about this next part, the clapping part. Could talk for it a long time. For hours, but we're going to see if we can be condensive here. Um, so clapping, and we're, we're talking about it in the context of church. Okay, context of worship. Um, clapping is like 
Yeah, when you think about where do you hear clapping in the church? Where do you hear clapping in in worship? You hear it like right after our song. That was really great. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right after a song, that was really great. That was so loud. After, I did not know that's what you were going for. That's what you were trying to find. She was asking if we could hear it through the headphones, and I shook my head no. Oh. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Good remembering that which one it was, excellent. though. <laughs> yeah, that would be so... I was, yeah. Well done. Well done. Um, anyway. So clapping, such as that, you would hear right after a song, you would hear maybe after a message was preached, during the message, mm-hmm. like, you know, amen, preacher, whatever, clap. Come on. Um, or like here at college, here at college, we get a lot of, you know, Mark Job comes up after the band and says, yeah, like, give it up for the worship team. Give it up team. for the worship team. And people clap. Um, so well, I think what we need to define here quickly is what does clapping portray? What are you tr- What are you trying to say when we clap? Who are we praising or thanking, right? So... The core of my opinion is who are we praising? Because when we clap during, um, like after a message or after a person goes up on stage, I feel like we most of the time are praising the band or the speaker. And we're recognizing that person and not the person that we're worshiping or the person we're learning about, God. So like when we worship and when we, when we preach, it's we're, what we're trying to be on that stage is mirrors to God, right? Just like a, if you think about a slanted mirror and you look at it, you're seeing the ceiling. If you look at a, sl- a slanted mirror or you're looking at like refracted light, and that's what we're just trying to be. We're just trying to be mirrors that look straight up to God while mm-hmm. we worship or while we preach. Um, but when we clap and we praise things like after a message or after a song, what we're doing is most of the time we're recognizing those people and saying, good job, you perform this worship. Good job, you preach this message. And I don't think that's necessarily right. There are certain contexts where that can be correct, um, where you are praising the Lord in the middle of a song or in the middle of a sermon. And you're like, yes, you know, God, amen, I love you. Like you're trying to say that to, to God. But but I just think that in the middle of a song and in, in the middle of a, a message may be the only appropriate time we can clap. Because um, most of the time we're trying to fill the silence, which leads to the other part that I want to talk mm-hmm. about, which is silence. Um I feel like in the church we don't like silence enough. And that's part of the reason we clap so much is because, okay, song's over. Time to clap in between the transitions so there's no silence. Time to clap at the end so there's no silence in that transition. Silence is a good thing. I know in the past couple episodes we've talked about smooth transitions in worship. We've talked about moving things along. But sometimes Mm -hmm. if you can get those smooth transitions, even just to be quiet, just to be – just because how are you supposed to hear God? speak to you. If you're, you're like, God, speak to me. I want you to tell me what to do, but you're never quiet enough to hear him. He's not going to be able to speak to you. Like imagine you're on a playground and you're like, you know, you're talking to your buddy, Jason across the playground. You're like, I, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and he says, good, but you can't hear him because the playground's too, too no, wild. Then you, that, the playground, everybody's got to be quiet, you know? And it's not like, Oh, we got to be physically silent so we can we're going to hear God audibly. It's just like when he speaks to your heart, you have to quiet your heart and you have to quiet your emotions and be able to focus on that. And that comes in those silent transitions or those quiet transitions. Um so let the silence be after a song or after a message. Like I know people, oh it's going to be awkward the speaker walks mm-hmm. off or they walk off and it's quiet. No. Like if you are in true worship and you're in the presence of the Lord, you won't even know that they're gone. They walk off stage, you won't know because you're you're there with him. So clap for the joy of the Lord when you when you can, but don't don't start turning worship and preaching into a concert or a performance. Because when you go to a concert or a performance, you can clap for as many people as you want because you, you're you're appreciating their music. You're appreciating what they're doing. Just this is about God, and it always has been, and it always should be. Right. Are you talking specifically about like in the church or are you talking about in chapel? I'm or talking about at all times? Okay. I would say in chapel here at campus and I think in church too. Whenever you're in a Are those the a only two circumstances? Like what constitutes a time that we should be worship. I think when you're in a wor- I mean I guess you're a good good well, point. Those concerts then what constitutes is worship? You got a good point. I didn't think about that one. Okay, well, and right. am I, if I'm going to see my favorite Christian band, should I then not clap? I think that depends on the band's perspective of what they're doing, whether or not they're trying to be a concert or they're trying to be worship set. Because I think certain bands, like when you go to see Chris Tomlin, like I went to see Chris Tomlin and Hillsong last two years ago, mm-hmm. three years ago, 
And they were very much like, this is worship. We're just going to sit here and worship. And some people clapped after certain songs. Sometimes they did. They were silent in between songs. And I was really appreciative of that. But um, I think it depends on where the where you're at. Like if you're at church, if you're at chapel, if you're at a concert, if you are in the process of worshiping mm-hmm. and it's supposed to be about God, mm-hmm. make it about God. If you're at a concert, your, your band that's not a worship band, clap for as much as you want. Or if it's at the concert and you're getting this feel that they're playing for you and not necessarily for God. Right. Like well, when you go to NF concert, he's not rapping for God necessarily in certain aspects. Right. So do I clap? No. I mean, yes. Clap for <laughs> NF if you want to. <laughs> well, and then the other thing is, is um, when like somebody is awarded something, should I clap for the person that just got the award? Well, in what context? Well, let's say it's the uh, the faculty of the year award or whatever they gave out last yeah. week at Founders Week. Should I then clap for, um, who was it, Dr. Peterman? Yeah, I think so. Because I think you're, you're congrat- it's an award for him that you're congratulating him for doing. And he can give praise to God as much as he, right. as much as he wants, and we can do the same. But you can clap for something like that. For so can I clap for a speaker? That's not a preacher? That's just a speaker? Yes. Can I clap for a preacher? I don't think so. If a preacher comes to just speak, can I then clap for them? There's so many different I agree. inner workings. So don't don't take this as your hard set in stone rules. This is just my opinions and where I feel like is important. I just think when it's supposed to be about God, it should be about God. And you should... And as when you're standing on stage and you're portraying, yeah. you're preaching the Here's word. You're when when it's about the word, when it's about his word and him, and it's about worship and it's about him. Make it about him. Mm-hmm. If they're coming to teach you, like like when Rydell was up this morning, yeah, um, you, you could theoretically clap for him because he didn't necessarily preach the word. He brought the Bible in there, but he was talking about Israel and the conflict over there. Mm-hmm. And so you can clap for him if you want. I just don't really like clapping in chapel at all because I just am too melodramatic on certain things but anyway baptist bound to baptist yeah so there's <laughs> your there's your my there's p's guidelines for that well here's ladle's guidelines real quick because we got to move on to the next here pretty soon but here's what i think i think that if you clap without prompting to any particular like the worship band doesn't tell you they'll oh, clap for us or clap for god or whatever mm-hmm. else and you decide you want to clap do it if somebody comes up after them and says let's give it up for the worship team no yeah <laughs> i'm pretty hard uh-uh. to that because we talked about that in church music history oh, and yeah. philosophy one of our classes that yep. we have to take with dr kim um and it is it's taking away from what you were just doing it's like yes let's praise the lord in all this music and then also yay these people are the reason that we got to praise god mm-hmm. am i celebrating the people or am i celebrating god that's exactly my point and on it but here's the thing if nobody came up and said let's give it up for the worship team i think i would still clap because i would not simply be clapping for the worship team but I would be clapping in thankfulness for the time of worship that I just got to enter into with God. Mm -hmm. But as soon as somebody puts like a label on my clapping, points it towards the team. Yep. Don't do that. Mm -mm. I don't like that. And I think it's the same with any place that you go, like in churches, at concerts. If it's something that you're, you're feeling like you need to do, do it. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling thankful, clap. If you're feeling worshipful, clap. If you want, if somebody said something real good, go on. <laughs> you know? And, but if somebody is asking for applause, they're saying, hey, uh, I did this really good thing. Applaud me. Applaud me. Mm-hmm. I will not applaud them. Mm-hmm. If anything, they will lose much 
much respect in my eyes. Mm-hmm. And that's not anything against the people who do say that, like Mark Job. I love him. I do but love Mark Job. Sometimes I just don't like the way that he says those things. So if you're listening, Mark, we love you. We love you. Just think about those things. Yeah. Anyway. Take a minute. <laughs> 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 that, was, that was loud in our headsets. I don't know how loud that was for those people who listen, but that was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> that scared the crap. Out of me. Yeah, I could see your soul leave your body. <laughs> I was prepared for it. So, anyway, <laughs> okay. I think it's time for our next segment now. I think so too. Projectile. I mean, <laughs> projectile commenting. We are going to talk briefly about, and this is good because I don't really have a lot to say on this anyway. Yeah. Thanksgiving songs. Thanksgiving songs. Because there Why really aren't there any? There really isn't a lot. Um, <laughs> like, so why isn't there any? Because, you know, there's Christmas songs. There's, I guess there's not really many Easter songs, but there's a lot of songs that can apply to Easter because it's about the resurrection, right? Mm-hmm. But like Thanksgiving, I think, is too much pegged as a, like a secular holiday and while it, i don't think it was invented by anybody who had religious or gospel means it still could be heavily applied like we were talking about in welcome to the word can be applied to thanking god so i think the reason there just isn't any is just because people don't especially in, at least in the christian realm there's not a lot because people don't i don't think just give it enough thought about it being a gospel centered thing being thankful um, and it also is just like hard to write. Like Christmas songs is very easy to write for because Christmas is such a huge holiday. But Thanksgiving is so I think undermined. Some people don't even celebrate it. Like yeah. it's crazy. So um, I love Thanksgiving, and here's why: food, one, two, family, three, friends, four, thankfulness, five, which is actually one, God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thanksgiving is great, and I don't think people give it enough. I adore Thanksgiving. I love traditional Thanksgiving food and everything to do with it. So Do you feel like there needs to be songs? Like do do we feel like there needs to be a Thanksgiving? Okay, so here's the thing. A friend of mine used to write Thanksgiving songs. Really? Yeah. Because she thought there wasn't enough Thanksgiving songs, which there's not. And that there should be more because she wanted to listen to Thanksgiving music and not Christmas music yet. She was not ready for Christmas and she wanted Thanksgiving. So she wrote herself a Thanksgiving playlist of songs to listen to in her car. That is, I'm not kidding. (laughs) That was a thing that actually happened. And um, yeah, so that was an interesting thing. But they weren't like good, you know. But they were thankful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they were Thanksgiving. They were giving thanks. thanks. <laughs> Just um, not in the most musically pleasant way. But that's absolutely. okay. <laughs> if you, she's Lisa. listening, which she very mo- w- well might be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a hate to your Thanksgiving playlist. I do enjoy it. Sometimes I listen to it. <laughs> okay, continue <laughs> Um, so Ben Rector is one of my favorite um, artists. Love um, Ben Rector. He's we great. talked about him a little we last time. On, um, we touched ben. him. Oh, um, <laughs> just kidding. We touched no. on him last. Was it? Yeah, two weeks, two weeks ago. ago symf- when we talked about when symphony, w- sessions. symphony sessions. Symphony um, sessions. He has these two songs that I know of that are sort of Thanksgiving esque. There's one because he's a also a big evangelical Christian. Yes. Um, Self proclaimed. Um, and so he he's on like so in Grand Rapids ninety one point three plays this song from them ninety one point three W C S G thank you and You're I'll welcome. be sued um, oh thank you is Oops. a song by them <laughs> I'm kidding you won't be we <laughs> won't be um, thank you he wrote a song called just thank you and it's just basically about life and about prayer and about how he should he doesn't pray enough and it's actually it's a pretty decent song I'm not too upset about it they play it on Christian radio I like it. Uh-huh. That's not necessarily like a very Christian, like a very it's Thanksgiving a, type song. Yeah. But he also wrote this other song called th- called Thanksgiving Song, which has more ties to Thanksgiving itself. It's actually on it, the cover of it is a Christian or a Christmas album esque. It's him in a Santa hat. Yeah. And it's called Cri- Thanksgiving Song, which I think he wrote in more of like a haha, it's Christmas and I'm writing a Thanksgiving song. Um, but those are the only two that I can really think of that are Thanksgiving songs. Now, you've got pieces of music that are very Thanksgiving. It's like pe- the Peanuts theme when they did their 
whole like peanuts Thanksgiving. That's all about mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. True. Um, but <laughs> what would you put in a Thanksgiving song? How would we? No, we don't have to write what one here now. But what are some of those themes song? that we would put in there? Thankfulness. <laughs> all right, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I would. I would talk about family. I would talk about fellowship. Mm-hmm. I would talk about the Lord and why I'm thankful for what I'm thankful for. I'd talk about my life and what God has brought me through and why I'm thankful and lessons I've learned. And I could write a whole playlist full of songs. There you go. So there could be Thanksgiving songs. I have no will to write them. Um, But I wish somebody would. I just don't. I don't really want to either. So I wish there was Thanksgiving music. I don't want to be the one to write it. That's fair. That's my heard, take. Heard, as the kids say. I wish that more people uh, focus less on uh, secular Christmas music and more on... Even I'd take secular Thanksgiving songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's none of those either. You don't get the feel. Like when Christmas, it really hypes you up for the, f- for oh, the, yeah. the season, Christmas music. Um, and you hear Mariah Carey and you're like, ooh, I'm in this. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm <laughs> you know? not ready for that yet. <laughs> and I need Thanksgiving yeah. before I can be excited for Christmas. And after being in orchestra and starting to play Christmas songs in September. Yeah, for Candlelight Carols. It, I want a break. I'm ready. I want a break. Gonna, I'm starting to be in the mood. This year was the first year I've ever been like, I kind of miss my Christmas music. I want, and I've always oh. been a. Not a like. <laughs> I've always been an avid like, no Christmas music until, <sighs> until Christmas. But anyway. I'm that person. I don't want to belabor the point. I'm but not. if you want to write it, do it. We are ready for it. Yeah. Well, if I think we're ready for our last ready, segment here, then we're gonna be going alone at this point, and I will be telling a short story today, and Peas will be telling us about some sort of car part, and I will let him start. Start? Oh dear. Okay. I'm just kidding. My car noises. So I don't have any props with me today. We're talking about. Um, engine, and I don't have anything to demonstrate right now. Um, I don't have any pistons or. Right. He's whatever. got nothing in hand right now. I got nothing in hand, so I'm gonna do my best to. We're gonna re- let's review. Actually, you know what? How about this? You tell me what you remember from our previous lessons here. Okay, we got Starting you with got the piston. What's before that? Uh, the spin the crank. Yep. Shaft? Yep, there crank you go. Shaft, crank shaft. Crank shaft. It's the thing that spins like a pencil rolling down a hill, and yep. d- but it looks like a bicycle pedal. But it's got those, and yep. it's got the pistons on it, and the pistons fit into the cylinders that are in the block. Yes. And then the v- the valves. Yep. Put in and take out. What? Put in the gas and yep. take out the exhaust. Yep. And the spark plug. Yep. Lights it up so it goes yep. kablooey. Yep. And it makes it move. Yep. And I think that's as, as far as we got. Uh, we talked a little bit about block anatomy. And well, yeah, but, but I, I said the block. That I know, but like the different part. Well, okay, oh, we'll, yeah, we'll start yeah, there yeah. then. That was excellent. Well done. Yeah. Um, but at, so something that's important to note here is, does that show on the camera when the lights Yeah. Are? Okay. Anyway. If you're watching, the lights. Kinda the lights kind of go on and off. There's an auto sensor light right outside the room that we're in, so... And sometimes people walk past and it and lights, it lights up. up. So if it shows on the video, we're sorry about that. But anywho, so you abs- you got everything spot on. So it's uh, something I realized we're it's going to get more complicated now because we're going to get into are we doing a V or are we doing an inline engine? Because like we talked about before, the V, a v. the V eight, the V six. I didn't I didn't quite touch on that enough. The big like ones. those numbers are just the number of pistons you have, and that can relate to the number of power, how quick you can go. Yeah. Um, and so an engine block that's for a four cylinder will just be very rectangular, uh, but a V, like a V eight engine, will have a, a very looks like a V, right? So the pistons are pumping this way. Um, and as far and I'm I'm gonna 
in my head, I'm going to kind of start going in towards the V8 Mm -hmm. because like I'm thinking we're building a Chevy 350 in my head. Okay. And so that's kind of a very common V8 that they would use in the eighties for all sorts of muscle cars. It's so awesome. I'm getting like excited just thinking about it. (laughs) Um, But I'm going to start going off of that, like V8 towards, you know, sort of thing. So as far as block anatomy goes, we have the oil pan, which is where all the oil goes when you pour it in. And then you have the crank case, which is kind of just under the block. It's not really a spot exactly. It's just that's where the um, the crank shaft is, is, and it's where, you know, that's just kind of mm-hmm. how it is, just where the crank shaft is. And then you have the block itself, which is just the main chunk of metal in the middle. And then you have the heads, which are the things that go on top. And I'm th- if I'm thinking V, it goes on the sides here, kind of like diagonally. Um, and they are these things that sit on the top. Um, oh, you know, I should have brought my plastic. What? <laughs> every, every time you move your hands, it comes into my frame. Oh, it does? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So <laughs> That's no, funny. it's okay. It's just like you've slowly gotten closer and closer until you're like out here. <laughs> you're right. All right. My bad. So <laughs> anyway, so nice. the heads go on. Yeah. We talked they, about that a little bit. Right. And so those contain the valve train the valve train mm-hmm. and that's just how the valves are moved and that's kind of what we're going to talk about here i have some great pictures for this um and we're going to start with the like the un- there's not there's the camshaft okay so this is different than the crank shaft right it's the camshaft and cam. it kind of sits in cam <laughs> it kind of sits just above the crank shaft behind the pistons mm-hmm. and it's a very similar looking rod and but it's got like eggs that spin on it okay eggs? now the yeah, eggs, egg-shaped metal. Eggs. Eggs, egg-shaped metal. Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> oof! If you speak French, um, that's not how you say yeah, that it word. Is. It's oof. 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 There's an O in there. I say oof. 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 Anyway. I. Okay. So as the camshaft is cr- connected to the crankshaft, <laughs> it's got Can't it's got it's called the timing chain. Okay, you may have heard of a timing belt before, but that's different. Timing chain is what connects the crank to the cam, and that's how those valves open at the the right times. So the camshaft moves next to the cr- basically next to the crankshaft. Yeah, and, and they're attached. Through and they are attached chain. to these things called the camshaft is attached to these things called um, push rods. Now the push rods, um, the push the, they push up and down uh-huh. vertically. And they Imagine they that. poke at the top. Okay, this is so hard to describe. It's right? a rod that pushes. Right, it's a push rod. Wow. So if you have a V8, you have two of them because they have. <laughs> you have to go get two. Stop. <laughs> you got to get to the two <laughs> sides of the engine, both both sets of pistons. <laughs> so you have you have push rods on both sides, uh-huh. and they push up and down like this as the camshaft moves. Yeah. As they're pushing up, there's a thing on the on the top of the engine called okay. a rocker. Rocker. And the rocker gets pushed up and down, gets pushed up and down by the push rods. And as the rocker gets pushed, when the front of the rocker gets pushed, it pushes yeah. the valve in and out. So you have two v- two of those uh-huh. on each piston, on each head. Okay. So that, not on each head, but on each thing. So ideally, if you had a V8, you had four pistons on each side, you would have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. You have sixteen valves and 16 <laughs> rockers because that's what opens and closes the valves uh-huh. so those pictures will be up and it's very easy to see i've shown you the pictures already um but yeah for those visually i guess just the push rod goes up like this and every time it goes up it pushes this rocker down up and down can they see that yeah mm-hmm. it pushes the rocker forward like this kind of if and you're listening it's kind of like uh pointing downward yeah, so makes it, it makes it tilt forward. Right, so think and down. Th- if you're listening, just like put your arm straight like up, a seesaw. up and down. Yeah, put your arm straight up and down, and then put your hand on top of your other hand, like making a T, but like just at your wrist. At your wrist. And as and then you push your push your arm up and down. It it kind of pushes your your hand into. Mm-hmm. The, I don't know how to describe it, but anyway. that's what moves the valves up and down. So as your engine's running, as your the explodes are happening, the camshafts mm-hmm. attached to the crankshaft. It it times everything out. That's why it's called the timing chain. So that everything moves at the right time at the right speed. <sighs> that was a lot. But yeah. oh, one more thing. Nowadays, there's a thing called the overhead cam. And what the overhead cam will do is that it moves from next to the crankshaft and it moves to on top of the head. And when it when it does that, 
when it does that, it gets rid of the push rods and the rockers altogether, and the camshaft just moves the valves themselves. So you can go have higher RPMs because you have less moving parts. We will review that again next week, but um, that's kind of where we're at mechanically in our cars today is that you have overhead cams. Um, yeah. How's that? Can you I don't know if I could explain to? that back to you. Well, we'll start at that point next week, but yeah. why don't you get into your stories here? Okay. So starting with last week's story, last week's story was false, folks. Oh, right. That was the... Um, that was about me breaking my collarbone. So that actually did happen to my sister, however. Um, and she didn't break her collarbone. She just sprained it. But she was in a full, like, arm sling for a good long while. And it was we were at our neighbors jumping on the trampoline. But it was false. So partially true. Partially false. Just wasn't about me. It's about my sister. This week's story, however, is pertaining to me. So in 2020, my dad decided to get chickens. And we built a chicken coop out of our old shed. And we had three roosters, Speckles, Reggie, and what was the other? Oh, Harold. There were laws against that, though, right? Having huh. certain roosters in neighborhoods because of they... We lived in the middle of nowhere. Good point. It's neighborhood <laughs> stuff, but you did not live in the neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, anyway, we had Harold, Speckles, and Reggie. Reggie was the biggest of the roosters, the meanest of the roosters, and used to chase me around all the time. This story is not about Reggie. It's about Speckles. One night, I was told to go put the roosters in, and that pertained to me literally walking out and closing the doors because that was the easy part. Letting them out in the morning was the hard part because I'd have to whip open the doors and sprint away so Reggie didn't bite me. But um, Speckles was not there. I looked in the chicken coop to make sure they were all present, and they were not. He failed attendance that day. He failed and attendance. And I was like, did not um, in, in Canvas. I said, uh, where did he go? <laughs> so I call up my dad, and he says, well, why don't you go take a look in the woods, you know? And it's dark. And I'm like, uh, whatever. You know, I've walked through woods in the dark before, no biggie. And what I hear as I'm walking towards the woods is coyotes off in the distance and Ow. my chicken. <laughs> I hear, I hear <laughs> kind of this chicken in pain, you know? Like dying. And I'm like, well, the coyotes got him. No, oh, well, <laughs> cutting my losses. But I know how much that my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I know how much my family loves this chicken so I decide to go try and find him anyway and I get out into the woods with my flashlight on and I see a feather on the floor and Speckles was a barred rock chicken if you're a chicken person they are beautiful and my favorite kind of chicken we love barred rocks so I found a beautiful barred rock feather and I said oh no <laughs> And suddenly the coyotes sound a little closer than I want them to be. <laughs> and so I have my flashlight. I turn it off um, because I find it that I can see better without my flashlight on sometimes in the dark in the woods because moonlight lights things better than a flashlight does most times. So I'm walking through the woods. I go off the beaten path a little bit. I lose sight of the path back to my house. But that's okay, because I know these woods like the back of my hand. I grew up there. And so <laughs> I get out, and I find Speckles. Hallelujah. Speckles is sitting there. He is a little torn up. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Yikes. He's looking a little rough. <laughs> He's got some chunks out of him. Um, but I pick him up, and I had a little sweater thing on, so I wrapped him in my sweater to stop him from bleeding and I you know go to call up my dad and I hear some rustling like not too far from me and so I turn my flashlight back on and I turn and there's this like greenish gold white thing shining back at me there's two of them and uh if you know anything about coyotes their eyes when flashed to the flashlight turn that greenish gold white kind of color Oh, boy. And I'm like, well, it's just one coyote. It's not going to, like, come at me on its own, whatever, whatever. And I am like, well, 
speckles we're good now we're just gonna i'm gonna turn around and go home we're gonna ignore that this thing's here and i turn around and on the other side of me is another set of eyes oh, that dear. are in the greenish gold and i'm like well crap and so i turn to my other side and there is yet another coyote Surrounded. and i was surrounded by coyotes in this case um and uh a thing that i think is good good quality for me is I don't panic in these situations when things are going really wrong I just kind of like okay and I panic later and so (laughs) I was uh standing there and I'm thinking to myself well you know I'm probably gonna die right now (laughs) and I was like uh so I call my dad and he's like hey you found the chicken great blah 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 go put him in the pen and we'll get him to the vet when we can blah 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 and I'm like yeah, so bigger problem. About that. <laughs> There's coyotes on all four sides of me, and they've just been kind of sitting here <laughs> looking at me, and I don't know what to do. He's like, run. I'm like, run? That seems like a horrible idea. <laughs> and so I do it. <laughs> Which direction? Um, There was like, so there was about six of them, and they had surrounded me in a shape where it looked like there was supposed to be seven of them. And so there was, like, one little sliver where I could run through and hopefully not die. And so I just booked it in that direction. And I screamed at the top of my lungs. I was like, because I was like, if I'm really loud, I'll try to scare them. And so I was, I had speckles in my one hand. And I was flailing my arm in the other. And I was screaming and yelling and running. And I don't think the coyotes really cared. Wow. <laughs> I think they just kind of were like, okay, this lady's crazy. Because I didn't feel like I was being followed, first of all. And I only ran so far before I was like, I don't feel like running anymore. (laughs) If they get me, they get me. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Because I hate running that much. I really do. But, uh, yeah. So I made it back to the house, but I almost got killed by coyotes. And I was really scared. They surrounded me in the middle of the woods. Wow. So tell me whether that one's true or false. Because you're going to be surprised. Either way. So. All right. That'll do it for our ladle of peas today. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us again. Yeah. It was a wild ride. We went through it a lot was. of We were on a roller coaster. And but happy Thanksgiving. If happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy food and family and the Lord. And praise the Lord in all yes. times. Rejoice. Um, we are thankful for you for listening and thankful Please for the opportunity to get to record this podcast for you guys. Um, so, so you tell your family that can be something you're thankful about. And we are for ladle and peas. most thankful for our producer, Lisa. Yep. She is the best and She's does the most for Woo! us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be thankful, go in peace, and we will have a nice, heaping, healthy ladle of peas for you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.